بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله from some of the fantastic treasures of the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم is the ahadith mentioned in Arba'in Anawawi and in this excellent book that I just purchased Al-Fawaid At-Tarbawiya Min Arba'in Anawawiya this book which was prepared by Musnid Al-Qahtani is a fantastic work which talks about the educational benefits derived from the 40 hadith Anawi. and we're going to read one hadith and talk about the many benefits that were abstracted from this hadith An Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma qala كُنْتُ خَلْفَ نَبْأَ كُنْتُ خَلْفَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَوْمًا فَقَالَ يَا غُلَامُ إِنِّي أُعَلِّمُكَ كَلِمَاتٍ أَحْفَظُ اللَّهَ يَحْفَظُكَ أَحْفَظُ اللَّهَ تُجِدُهُ تُجَاهَكَ إِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَأَسْأَلِ اللَّهَ وَإِذَا اسْتَعَنْتَ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَأَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتْ على أن ينفعك بشيء لم ينفعك إلا بشيء قد كتب الله تعالى لك وإذا اجتمعوا على أن يضروك بشيء لم يضروك إلا بشيء قد كتبه الله تعالى عليك رفيت الأقلام وجفت الصحف رواه ترمذي نص حديث صحيح ترمذي the hadith of Abdullah bin Abbas رضي الله تعالى عنهما he said I was behind the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one day and he said, O oh, Gulam, you know, O oh, boy verily I will teach you uh, some words and then he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described these words he said, preserve Allah or protect Allah and he will protect you protect Allah and you will find him you know, in whichever direction you take if you ask, ask Allah. And if you seek help, then seek help from Allah. And know that if the nations gathered together to benefit you with something, they couldn't benefit you with anything except that Allah had written it for you. And if the nations had gathered together to harm you, they cannot harm you except what uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for you. The pen has been lifted and the ink, the pages have dried. And this is in Tirmidhi. From the many benefits of this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one of the first benefits <coughs> that were derived is the hars ala ta'lim al sagar is the vigilance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in teaching the youth or teaching the young and being gentle with them and keeping keeping the ta'lim easy for them to understand and digest and within that context is also not belittling the youth that means when you teach to their level you're not belittling them and you're not seeking to make things to where it is if you are talking to belittle them, but rather you are raising them up with ilm. And this is a problem we see with many people who teach the youth, is they teach and they belittle them. They teach them as if they don't understand anything and as if they are ignorant and will remain ignorant. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows the importance of speaking to the youth uh, and listening to what they have to say from beneficial speech and that they should pay attention and benefit and that will benefit their intellect.
by them listening and paying attention and benefiting from the manners and the uh, the ilm that's being imparted to them. Another benefit of this hadith is benefiting from the waqt or from the time uh, when seeking knowledge. Meaning wherever you are, if you are trying to memorize the Quran, maybe on, on your walk to your car, uh, maybe as you leave the car, you're revising a hadith. As you are sitting here in the park, that you are reading a hadith or memorizing a hadith and benefiting from the time because uh, as this hadith illustrates that they were on a riding animal probably a donkey when and he was on the back of the donkey with the Prophet Sallallahu and he asked this question and he uh, uh, was getting this ta'lim, this darasa, this these benefits from the Prophet Sallallahu so it shows us the importance of benefiting wherever we are, striving to benefit and use our time wisely for ilm. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows the humbleness of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in that he used to ride donkeys and uh, a camel and you know was a humble, living a humble uh, living. And he was the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Another benefit of this hadith is that this hadith illustrates that when teaching or when advising someone that you should give a muqaddama munasib muqaddama munasiba that you should give a uh, an introduction that is beneficial and useful that will entice the people to uh, benefit from the knowledge that's being imparted and this was illustrated in the hadith of Mu'adh in where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam began, he said, Inni uhibbak fala tad'a fi, fi dubra kulli salat. Fala tad'u fi kulli dubra salat. That Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, opening his heart first, he said, verily I love you. Inni uhibbak, verily I love you. And he said, and then he advised him, and then he gave him the command, he said, do not, uh, make supplication at the end of every uh, uh, prayer during, at the end of every prayer and so this shows the excellent way that the Prophet Sallallahu gave advice and from his sunnah is to give advice with a muqaddama with a way of opening the hearts first saying you know you know I, I love you or oh beloved or may Allah have mercy upon you you know opening it up with du'a and things that will open up the listeners' hearts. Another benefit of this hadith is that we see the importance of choosing a, a time which is a, a beneficial time in order to teach. That you shouldn't teach the people when they're tired and they're inattentive and they have other things that busy them, but rather you should teach the people when they are going to be most open to learning. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us the importance of giving aqidah, you know, creed. Uh, creed, it's, its importance in teaching in that, you know, Ahl Sunnah busies themselves with teaching Tawheed and creed and all aspects of the deen. But that aqidah is first and most important. And this is illustrated because the Prophet Wasallam was teaching uh, uh, was teaching the Sahabi the uh, to fear Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and to have tawakkul upon Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. You know, trust, put their trust in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and yaqeen and certainty, and certainty with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's promises and fear from his punishment. So all of these things were being imparted in that ta'lim, in that teaching, and that was an illustration of the importance. All those issues were issues of, of aqidah and creed, you know, tawakkul, and how to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us the importance of uh, of this hadith in general 
and that the scholars have spent, um, you know, there are many shurahat, many explanations of this hadith for it, due to its importance in teaching and in spreading the creed of Ahl Sunnah and the belief and the, the tawakkul and those important attributes of Iman. Uh, Ibn Rajab said about this hadith, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he said, وَهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ يَتَضَمِّنْ وَصَايَ عَظِيمًا وَكَوَاعِدْ كُلِّيَّ مِنْ أَهِمْ وَمِنْ أَهَمْ أَمُورِ الدِّينِ He said that this hadith, that this hadith, it includes uh, the most immense advice and one of the most inclusive principles in the religion uh, regarding the important uh, issues in the religion. And the scholars have, have countless statements with regards to this. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith illustrates for us that uh, an important qa'idah that the ulama they mention, they say, al jaza min jins al amal, that the reward for something is a part uh, of the, the deed that a person did, that the, the deed is commensurate, the reward is commensurate with the deed that a person does. And this is illustrated in this hadith because in this hadith, uh, the Prophet wasallam said, Allah, uh, that if you, uh, if you protect the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, staying within his bounds that he has set, then Allah will preserve you. So that means that the amal, which was preserving the limits of Allah, uh, that the reward was preservation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. al jaza min jens al-amal. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith uh, is inclusive uh, around so many issues uh, of a'mal aqalbiya, the issues of the heart. And for example, for, uh, tawakkul, which is uh, trusting in Allah. Well, yaqeen, certainty in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his commands and his promises. Wisti'ana, which is also a, 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 you know, a, a relying uh, hope, um, Seeking help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Well khawf wa raja And fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And uh, having hope for his mercy And fearing his punishment All of those are acts Those are a'mal qalbiya Those are acts or actions of the heart Another benefit uh, and, and with regards to that The asas of the actions of the heart Is tawheed the asas or the foundation of the actions of the heart is tawheed, is sound tawheed. Because this is, you know, has to do with your iman in your heart. And of course that your worship is tawheed al-ibadah, that your worship is sincerely uh, directly, directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another benefit of this uh, hadith, as we mentioned, that the protection of the servant where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah, you know, preserve Allah. This means preserving the commands of Allah and following his, following his orders and avoiding his prohibitions, having taqwa. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith uh, makes ithbat or it affirms the ma'iyya that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is with us, Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, that he sees us and he's with us in, his, in supporting us and in helping his servants, especially his obedient slaves amongst the mu'mineen. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith illustrates for us the fadl of dua, the importance of dua and the superiority of supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us that isti'ana is ibadah, yajib sarafaha lillahi wahtahu la sharika lahu, that isti'ana, seeking help, seeking the, the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that this is worship that only belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that ibadah, that when we have that isti'ana to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this is shirk, this is something that is only reserved for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that pure isti'ana which goes to the, to the level of worship 
another benefit of this hadith that was mentioned, uh, and, and and this is uh, also clarified or illustrated for us in the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُوا وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ in Surah Al-Fatiha that we always implore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying, it is you alone who we worship and it is you alone who we seek assistance. And that's the assistance that doesn't mean negate seeking assistance from people you need some help in the dunya la but it it means the uh, the isti'ana which has to do with ibadah that has to do with putting your heart and your trust and your fear and your seeking help in totality with your heart from someone else and 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 uh, and this only is reserved for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we can seek help from people in as far as they're able to do i can't seek help from my dead ancestors for example they can't even help themselves from death but rather i only seek this kind of uh, ibadah from allah uh, when it comes to ibadah to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from allah tabarak wa ta'ala uh, another last benefit that we'll mention from this hadith is this hadith shows us the importance of patience and that it is one of the greatest reasons a person uh, gains uh, the assistance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, that when the servant that they rely on Allah and they seek the help and refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will not let them down he subhanahu wa ta'ala will come through for them and assist them and help them and help them in their situations and from their trials and tribulations and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam